don't you just hate it when there's nothing decent on the box? So, why don't you go switch off your television set and go do something else less boring instead? <laughs> Name that kid's program if you can. In this video, I'm going to tell you about this game called The Networks. In this, it sees you as an executive for a TV channel and you are setting up five years of programming and you'll be hiring actors and you'll be putting adverts in these programs and hopefully after these five years are up, you have had the most viewers on your channel. So, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to show you how this game plays and then I'm going to tell you all the pros and cons about this game and then I'm going to leave it to you to decide whether this is worthy of your game collection. But I'm going to do that all after this commercial break. beginning of the game each player will choose one of the TV channels and obviously it will indicate what color you are. You turn this over and place it in front of you. You also take the deck of cards which match that TV channel. Your hand of cards will consist of three TV programs which you can place in any of the three time slots the 8 o'clock, the 9 o'clock or the 10 o'clock. You'll also have one advert and one actor and you'll place these in the green room. When you remove a program from your show, it will go into the reruns. You basically turn this card over and it has a rerun value marked in the other side of the corner there. And then you have the archives, which is what will happen with the reruns when it goes into here. This is your individual scoring track. You take a cube and you place it nearby so you can score at the end of the season. You'll also have to take three more cubes and place them on the top box of these three shows. This indicates what season this show is in and there'll be four seasons for each show. This card here also indicates what actions you can do on your turn, what happens at the end of a year or a season and then it says a bonus there and a end game scoring how that works and everything you need to know is on this card. So once you've read the rule book a couple of times and played the game a couple of times, you won't need the rule book anymore because everything is here. Next you're going to need to create the score tracker. Now depending on the number of players, you'll take one of these boards. As you can see, that's for all the different player counts. Yes, there's a one player version and they will have a different setup for the start round. And you can see there's more and more cards that are going to be needed for a five player game than there is for a two or one player game. So after you've chosen how many players there are, you place this down, this way up, get that right the first time. You'll have a number two board and a number one board which you'll place like this as well. These boards will change from game to game. Again, this is for a three, two, three, four, five player game. This is for a one player game only. And here on the turn order, there's a different turn order track for two player game there. Players will place their square colored tokens on the zero point track or zero viewers track here. They will also at random take one of these round tokens and decide the turn order at random like that. There's also a little token which tells you what season you are playing on. So you will start on season one. There are also these tiles here which are used to help you keep your score. So you might pass the 100 point mark, then you might pass the 200 point mark. And if you're lucky, you might get 300 viewers. So these are used to keep track of your 100 scores. Then players will be given their starting amounts. Depending on where you are on the track will determine how much money you get. So the blue player would get $5 million, whereas the purple player would get $7 million, 9 and 11 as seen. You'll then need to set up the pool. The pool is over here. This is how many star cards, ad cards, network cards and show cards are placed on the table next to the score track. The center table should look something like this. Not exactly, but something like this. So you have your stars in a row, you have your adverts in a row, you have your seasons and shows in here, and then you have your network cards placed down. 
on a player's turn they will choose one of the six actions available. One of those actions is to take a network card. There are four different types of network card. There are instant effect cards, there are one time use cards which you hold in your hand until you're ready to play. You have these infinite cards which have a constant power throughout your game and then you have these cards which will score you at the end of the game. There are also three different types of card in the network deck and you can remove any type that you like or just play with them all. There are normal ones which are clear. You have these ones with the A which means they're advanced and then you have these I ones which means that they're interactive. As I said if you wish to play without the interactive you could remove all the interactive cards and play with just the advanced and the normal or vice versa or just just play with the base cards. So a player takes a card, it's not replaced and play passes to the next player. If there are no network cards to take you can't take this action. A different action you can do is you can sign a star to your channel. Yes, get one of these guys working for you. What you do is you pay the price marked up on the left hand side here, so 3 million and then what you do is you put this guy into your green room. Some of the stats on the side here, this is when you attach it to a show. This is how many millions of viewers you will get with this actor. And this number up here tells you how much you're going to have to pay at the end of a season. This guy also has a condition so to speak. If he's not in a sci-fi show, you're going to need to turn this card around when you attach him to a show. And therefore his viewing figures are not going to be that good. Some of them, you just pay and then put them in your green room and then when you attach them to the show there's no problems whatsoever. And some actors you might have to remove due to the fact that they're not used in a two or three player game. Another action you can do is you can land an ad. This basically means that some company wants you to advertise their product. So you just basically take one of these like these crikey, creaky sneakers. They would actually pay you to promote their product so you will receive one million dollars and when you attach it to a show at the end of every season or year you will gain three million from the sponsorship and advertisements unless you haven't met the condition so if this advert was in any type of show apart from a sports show you'd have to rotate this and you'd only take one million some of these promo adverts are a bit more special. They act like actors. They have these viewing figures as well. Again, you'd have to do the special condition. Uh, so I'd have to pay five million to attach this to a show. Otherwise, it gets rotated and I'll only receive two million each season. And some adverts are just plain old adverts. And now we get to the meat of it. Getting and developing a show. These shows are in a particular order. You'll have your deck of cards and there'll be season one, followed by season two and three, followed by season four and five. And you'll need to put out the right cards at the right time, depending on the round that you're in. When you develop a show, it does not go into your green room. It immediately goes into a time slot of your choice. So let's say that we got this very chasmatic explosions. We can see that it's gonna cost us a million to develop this show and it's an action show each of the different colors represents a different kind of genre you have sci-fi you have comedy and you have romance and you have sports and other things so I'd have to pay a million to buy this show and I'd have to put it into a time slot immediately and preferably the 10 o'clock time slot because as you can see over here for season one I'm gonna get 10 viewers if it's on at 10 o'clock but if it's not on at 10 o'clock and it's on at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, I'm only going to get 7 viewers. Again, at the end of the year, this is the production cost that I'm going to have to pay. So unless I've got a good advert with it, mm, um, I'm going to lose money. And here is another commitment that you're going to have to make. When you add this show to your time slot, you need to add a advert as well. Some of these guys, you'll need to add a star. Some of these guys will be grey, which means that you, this one here, you can add a star or a pub, an advert whenever you want. Again, there's another number in the corner. This is what happens when the show gets cancelled and you put it into your reruns. So let's say I am going to develop this show, Celebrity Rhinoplasty. I remove one of my current shows from one of its time slots 
This says that I need an actor. Luckily I have an actor in my green room and I attach this to this project. And this cube will then go on to season one here. This show that I've cancelled will get turned around and put into the reruns. And that's going to score me one million viewers in the rerun section. Again, if I decide I'm going to cancel this show and replace it with another show, so like this one here, you throw the actor away, bye bye, and then you put this show in the reruns as well. And this will be my new show here, which is going to get me lots and lots of viewers. This leads me into attaching a star or an advert. As I said, some shows will have grey boxes. This means you can assign a star or an ad to it if you wish immediately or later. So for instance, I can attach this advert to this show for an action. As long as the actor or the advert has come from the green room, you can do that. You can't take from the pool in the middle of the table and add directly to a show. As the game goes on, the shows will have different requirements. This one needs a star and you can, if you wish, put a star or an advert with. Whereas this one, it needs an advert and you can add another advert if you want. And this one requires a star and an advert and again you can add either a star or an advert to that show. Woo! And the last thing you can do is you can drop and budget. This means that you don't wish to take any more actions, there's no more interesting cards in the middle of the table for you, or there is no cards whatsoever. You basically take your piece and you place it on the first amount. So in this case, eight million. I get eight million, woohoo! And then eventually everyone else will do the same until all players have passed, and then you go to the scoring round. So it's the end of season, the first thing I need to do is I need to do my income and expenses. At the moment, I gain one million dollars. Woohoo! Ding ding! And I have no expenses. But if I did, let's say I had this show in at 10 o'clock here, I would not get anything because that comes in and that goes out. Next, I will score my lineups and my reruns. This is a simple case of going down your shows. So in this case, so on season one, at 8 p.m., which is correct, I get eight viewers and nothing for an advert. So I get eight viewers and I mark up with my little personal scoreboard. I get no viewers there, no viewers there. But reruns, I have two, three, so I get three points there. This score gets transferred onto the main scoreboard. And then I have to age all my shows, moving the cubes down one space. So as you can see, I'm still not getting any viewers for these, but this time I'm getting seven viewers, but I'm still gonna get a million for the advert for the next year. These reruns then go into your archives, and you need to be able to see them because that will pay off in a bonus later on. And then you turn this over like so and this gives you some slightly different statistics it will tell you again how many cards you're going to need to set up but it'll also have a different drop in budget so whenever a player passes the first one that passes can either take 10 million dollars or they can gain five viewers and so on and so on you advance to season two you remove any cards which are left on the table and replace them with new ones and then you set up the turn order track. What will happen is the player who is most furthest behind, so in this case green, will be the first player followed by purple, followed by red, and followed by blue, who is winning at the moment. A bonus will occur when you add a third show to your lineup and it is of the same genre as two other shows that you have had in your reruns, your archives, or currently running. This bonus will give you five points immediately to your score. And it will also give you a choice of one or two things. You can either draw three cards from the actors pile or draw three cards from the advert pile. You get to keep one of those and discard the rest. There's an additional bonus if you manage to get to five cards of the same genre. You get your five points, but you can choose either actors, you can choose adverts, or you can choose network cards. Take three network cards, keep one of them, put the others away. And on top of that, you can transform your money into points. You can, for every $4 that you have, you can get three viewers. Bonus. So after you've done this five times for the five seasons, you're ready to do the final scoring. You do your scoring as normal, and then after you've aged your shows and you've moved your reruns into your archives, you'll score for your active shows again. And then the player with the highest amount of viewers is the winner. 
So to sum up, The Networks is a board game that everybody should try and tune into. This game is light, it's got a refreshing theme of uh, you know, organising a TV schedule um, and it's very easy to get into. The rules are very simple and as I said, once you've read the rules, you just got this reference chart in front of you and you just play the game fluidly. The game rolls really smoothly because it is just a case of each player taking a card from the middle and hopefully taking the cards that they want because there's always that thing that someone else would take the card that you want and then you think, I'm going to have to take another card. And then there's this whole push your luck aspect with when to drop out of gaming, you know, and collect the money or the viewers. You really, it's a very, very simple idea, but it's kind of like medium weight strategy behind it as you play as a pigeon eating bird food which is laid out in front of you and hopefully the bird food that you're eating is not the bird food which some other pigeons trodden on or even pooed on that's the worst thing it's very light the game plays very very smoothly it's a solid game now let's talk about the components the components are overall pretty good the cardboard uh, player boards are pretty solid although the corners are starting to round off nicely now. The three tier scoreboard is a really nice idea, it's novel um, because it can adapt to all the player counts and it tells you all the information again of what is used and what is not used and it's really nice although it will get knocked like a normal scoreboard. The money is, is good. It's a good, it's a good size, it's a good quality, um, I, you, I don't feel cheapskated by it. Wooden cubes, wooden cubes, it's wooden cubes, you know, they move like every time you breathe or burp or whatever. Um, the cards themselves, the cards are very good quality, they're very solid, um, they're, they're very clear, all the all the iconography is very easy to understand, which is a fantastic thing about this game. Um, my only niggle about the cards are the art um i, I you know it, it's okay it, it works for its purpose it's very humorous at first like munchkin but after a while you're like yeah and again i i found it really hard to distinguish what tv show it's supposed to be awesome industry accidents um how i left your father that's quite that's quite easy because it's how I left, how I met your mother, or something like that. But I, I found it really hard to distinguish, like the card artwork with the title in it. So I lost a lot of the humour uh, from the actors and and stuff like that. And as I said, it's very Munchkin humorish. There are people that were giggling at the table when we played. Um, and, but I can imagine that after many many times of playing, the giggling stops, and the only giggling would probably come from mixing um, the clown up with uh, The Walking Dead or you know just doing a weird clash of adverts plus actors plus the TV show that might make some giggles but uh, apart from that yeah it's, it's good quality components. Let's talk about the rule book. The rule book is extremely well written. You'll read it and you'll understand everything instantly. The layout is perfect um, if you have any questions that you have to go back to, they're easy to find the answers because of the way that it's laid out. There's plenty of examples, there's plenty of images that show you bits and pieces, um, and everything is just so easy to find and easy to understand. Now, whether that's to do with the fact that the game is quite easy to play, um, I don't know, but it could be just something to do with the writing and the fact that things are repeated as well. So there's this repetition in your head, if this happens, then that happens. Okay, and then later on, if that happens, then that happens. Yeah, brilliant. It explains how to play a one and two player game nicely. And it also has, you know, just a description of the, the, the shows and what they do. And then there's an almanac as well. So if you're unsure about something, you can check it out. And then there's a score sheet for the solo play. Yes, this game can be played solo. Hello. Um, yeah, this game has a fantastic solo mode. In fact, I prefer the solo mode to playing with other people because I don't like pecking up other people's poo. Um, the solo mode 
works like a puzzle. You've got to get a certain score within the game. And after every time you take an action, whether it be hiring a star or landing an ad, you'll draw a card from the top deck of the network cards. And at the bottom, it tells you which cards you're going to need to remove from the pool in front of you. So like in this one, I need to remove a show and I need to remove an, a network card. When there's no more cards to be taken from the pool, when it tells you to take one, you will get a, like a strike against you. You get five of these strikes, you're eliminated from the game, you lose automatically. And so there's this pressure there. There's also this pressure because some of the cards tell you to cover up one of the uh, drop budget limits. So you're gonna get less and less money. So you really have to weigh everything up and, and puzzle it out because these cards from the pool will be eliminated from the left of the table to the right of the table and you, it, it's great great fun really enjoy the solo version sticking with the network cards these are a source of replayability to the game because all the other cards are pretty much the same thing over and over again different stats in, but in the same kind of order um, and different rotation powers whereas these will spice up the game a little bit. Maybe they're a bit too spicy for some players because some of them are very take that. They slap other players around the face. You just go bang and ow, that hurts. Especially this card here. I had the misfortune of having this card played on us twice in one game and it left me bankrupt. Um, and made it really hard to get the ball rolling for the next season. It is you can take them out, but um, you know you want you want some variety in the game, and that does add variety. The other thing about the network cards is that they always seem to be like the last cards to be picked. Everyone's going for the shows and the actors and the adverts, and these just seem to be left on the wayside until there's none of the good shows left, or none of the good actors, or nobody has any money, and then these start getting picked, or players just drop out and collect their bonuses. One thing I'd like to say about these network cards is there should be some flavoured text on them, really. You've got flavoured art and flavoured stories on the cards and the actors and the adverts and everything. Why couldn't they have it on these as well? You know, um, yeah, you play this card on another player, their biggest star, um, most expensive star, goes on a drinking rampage and kills themselves, remove them from the game. You know, it's, Thematic stuff, um, you know, when you're scoring for another show from someone else's, you've actually pirated their channel or something. You know, just some flavoured text to, to to make these take card, take that cards and in other nasty cards, just feel thematic. You know. So, do I have any niggles about the game? Well, yes, I do have some niggles about the game. Obviously, the art is not that great for me. I mean, it would have been nice if there was more detail on the cards, you know, and there was a lot more depth in the show so that you can actually look at it and go, oh yeah, they're taking the mic out of that show in. And you look in the background, it's like Naked Gun, there's something going on in the background. Oh, they're taking the mic out of that character in season four when he did that. Oh, wow, yeah. But I can understand from a money point of view to produce this amount of cards with different artwork on it is going to be expensive and time consuming. So yeah, the, the, the art is okay and um, the humour is there, kind of munchkin style, and then fades. Um, in regards to replayability, a lot of the cards seem to do the same thing. Rotate if this is not sci-fi. Rotate if this is not sport. Um, none of the shows seem to be that much different either. either. The, the values go kind of up and then down again. And for me, you know, there were some TV shows that in the running of four years that they had, the four seasons that they had, the ratings just went up and up and up and up and up. But that's not really depicted here. They all kind of do the same. They go up a little bit and they go down. Or they start high and then they go down. It's the same with the actors. There's no kind of like special cards which stand out. They're all kind of mediocre. And it feels like once you've played it, it's rinse and repeat. When you're looking at the pool, it's kind of like, well, it's obvious, I want that card. But the only thing that's going to stop you is if someone else takes it. And so if you don't like other people taking your card and other people stepping on your feet and eating your bird food, then this game's probably not going to be for you. Um, the other little niggle is with the show cards themselves. Some of them you've got to remove. 
And unlike the network cards where you can easily see which cards you want to remove, you can't really see. You have to really scan. Well, the, it's the actor's card, sorry. Yeah, it's the actor's card. Some of them you've got to remove. And so, ugh, the advert cards, again, all pretty much the same. Um, the only thing that's going to change in this game probably is the players and the player counts. Playing with five players is not great. It is very long. It's very arbutious. It's, it's annoying. It's long. Uh, three player is a good game. It plays really quite quickly. Uh, and as I said, solo mode is my preferred mode. I like playing solo. Um, but it is a good game. Is it my cup of tea? I would say that it's a cup of tea that's been made by a friend who hasn't put like the right consistency of sugar ratio to water ratio um, and obviously use some kind of different tea bag which I'm not used to so the tea doesn't taste the same but it's not too bad I'll drink it and be polite so to say um, but it's not a bad game um, that's why I'm gonna give it this score here is it was it 7.5 yes yeah, it's 7.5 so there you go that's the network, he said, shaking the camera. Oh, <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful to yourself um, and it's, it's made you aware that this game could be good or could be bad, um, good. Like this video, give it a thumbs up. Go to my channel, boardgameseverybodyshould.com and uh, watch me there. Also, you might want to contribute towards what I do and uh, throw a few pennies my way. Go to my Patreon and um, just throw a few pennies my way. You might even get yourself something out of it. There's some special promos and there's uh, a raffle to win some music, some atmospheric music. So uh, go and check that out. And I'll finish by saying, you don't have to own every single board game that's out there. You just need to own a few good ones. And maybe this is a good one for you, or maybe not. So I'll leave it up to you, and I'll say ciao for now. And it's a race for each player to try and mix these molecules together in the right combination. And it's a race. Did I say it was a race? Yes, I said it was a race. But it's a race, and the player that is the, the quickest at mixing these molecules together without spilling them all or getting them touching their skin is going to be the winner. This game is very easy to teach, and I'll teach it to you now, and afterwards I'll tell you what I think about it, and afterwards I'll tell you if it's a board game that you should have in your collection. Big shout out to Ship Naked as well. Our, distrib our shippers for America, uh, Philly Bear, who have been, once again, ship. all the guys working with us. You said ship naked. Ship yeah. naked. Not ship. what you think you think naked. I said. Ship naked. Yeah. It's a weird yeah. name, and I've never asked them why, but I'm sure there's... I just, got a, I just got a package from Ship Naked, and my wife looked at it, and she says, what's this? And I <laughs> winked at her and said, <laughs> you'll <laughs> find <laughs> out. <laughs> well, there's a fig leaf in there somewhere. <laughs> It was my tiny epic western, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what she calls it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what she... Staying with the network cards. These cards, you know, they're good. They're good cards. They're okay. They make the phone go. Yeah, the game that sells the most are the classic ones. Yeah. Yeah, they're always there at the end of the year for Christmas. But you know, these ones behind are better. Look, fix it. No, we don't care if it's got Star Wars on it. I couldn't care if Splendor Star Wars come out or or Munchkin Star Wars. Look, ticket to ride. No, no, in France, the, 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 the market in board gaming has never had a crisis. It doesn't know what a crisis is. Maybe it's the name of a board game. 21 million boxes are sold a year and 343 million euros are made. And then, of course, there are lots of nice board game clubs. You should go and check some out when you come to France. They, oh, that game looks interesting. Mm, purple dice. Yeah, there's a good ambience. Yeah, it is convenient to share and, and play and, and be a big kid. Yes. Yes. Sinistros. 
Oh, yeah. Do you know what's genial about this? What's cool? Frederick Henry, that's what's cool. He invented games. It makes a lot of money. He's saying, yeah, he says that Barry Dublet is the best board game reviewer out there. You should go and check out boardgamesEverybodyShould.com. He doesn't have a problem, but he wants people to buy his game because it is a good game.